hello <laughs> happy monday check out this shirt how cute it's got like a little daisy and it says it's a good day or something on the back it's really cute if you've been sleeping on the men's t-shirt section and like marshall's tj maxx what are you doing with your life so anyway um this is the first clip look at that hair that's so bad this is the first clip for my vlog that goes along with my new TBR game. Um, it's called TBR Game Lauren's Version, and it's based on Taylor Swift songs. And I just sat and listened to Cold As You for the first time in probably forever. And um, so I know why it's taking her so long to record this, because she needs to work on the vocals a little bit. And also this song is depressing as hell. Um, so anyway, it's basically... A song about she's in this relationship and this other person is just distant and not caring and cold so for my game purposes I have decided that I can go off of like themes characters so to speak colors I can go off of words um, to find my book so additionally this week I'm also well this month I'm participating in the Amazing Readathon hosted by Brie over at Four Paws in a Book. And currently we are on the leg where we have to read a historical book. Um, so, <clears throat> ooh, my voice, what is happening? So my, my current audiobook that I'm going to be starting is Dragonfly and Amber because, <laughs> so yesterday was Sunday and on Saturday, I binge listened to Outlander because I am on the blue team and you get bonus points for a cover that is blue and also that book is like 850 pages and I flew an airplane so I doubled my pages so 1600 points right there thank you you're welcome to blue team if this makes no sense to you just know that the emotional damage that I had from binging that book this is the second time that I've read it, and I've definitely watched the show, like, a dozen times. So, like, I know what happens in book one, and there's some, like, not good stuff. There's some very good stuff, and then there's some not good stuff. And just constantly reliving the not good stuff is just crazy. But anyway, I was, I had a good time listening to it, and I've been meaning to catch up on the series. And I'm like, you know, if we're on a roll with loving this world and being in the Outlander world, we're just going to keep, keep going. And we're going to keep buying Audible credits because none of the audiobooks are available now. And I want to read them now. So take them bull by the horns. And I'm going to be starting this for my audiobook. Um, during the week, I don't always listen to as much because, like, I listen to it driving to and from work. But I don't, like, sit and dive and paint for two days to finish an audiobook. And this one, I think, is 30 hours. And... I definitely had to start at only like two times speed until I got into the story. And this one, I'd, I've watched first season a lot. So I know what happens. So if I, if my brain kind of dips in and out of listening, it's, I don't get lost. Whereas I have not rewatched the second season that much. And I, I think I've read the first book like two times. I really do. Maybe not in its entirety, but I've read parts. Like, I'm familiar with the first book to the extent that I knew what was happening, even if I wasn't always keyed in or if my mind wandered. Whereas with second book, like, I know what happens, but not so as well as the first book. So I'm going to have to start at two times speed and see what happens. Look at my poor edition. I want to get the hardcover ones so I can get the Juniper book, um book covers because they look so cute but anyway that's my audiobook this has nothing to do with cold as you I don't think I don't know that I can relate this at all Jamie is not cold Claire is not cold I mean Frank is cold and I think she goes does she go back to Frank at some point in here all right no that's the third book Maybe? Nope, there's Frank's words. So she must go back at some point, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, this is not Taylor Swift. So
so the book that I'm going to be reading for my cold as you prompt and I'm going to run this for the week. So if I finish this and I want to read something else for cold as you, I might do it. We'll see what happens. We'll see what the prompt drops are like for Amazing Readathon. But anyway, I found this book on my shelves. It's called Daughter of Winter by Karina, Karina Douglas. And actually, it's based on Scottish folklore. So it's going to go in well with my Outlander reading. Um, it follows myths and legends be behind the great winter goddess Kaliak Bior. I don't know. Scottish name. Um, there's two parallel stories. So we have like parallel timelines, which is perfect for my like historical prompt for the readathon. Um, one is present day and the other is third century BC ancient Scotland. So there are, it's a dark fantasy romance. There's pagan rituals, bully romance, emotional and physical trauma, unsavory dialogue. Wow, lots of stuff. Each book in the series ends on, on a cliffhanger. Um, so anyway, let's read the description on the back. It says, marked by an ancient prophecy wielded by the gods, shackled to a dark, enigmatic stranger and prey to a powerful adversary seeking vengeance. Her life will never be the same again. Um, intrigue and danger enters Bertie McKay's life when Gage walks into her carefully controlled world. He brings news that her grandmother has died, and as her last living relative, Bertie has inherited her estate and must travel to Scotland to accept her legacy and all it entails. Bertie doesn't want the inheritance, not after the way she was treated, and when a series of actions unfolds that illustrates her legacy is not just a physical entity, but a turbulent birthright proclaiming she is the descendant of the Celtic winter goddess Calig Bjur. She tries to run, but Gage won't take no for an answer. He has his own role to fulfill and will do whatever it takes to ensure Bertie returns to Scotland with him, even if it means taking her against her will. That just has like cold, cold romantic partner vibes to me. So I'm going to be starting this probably as soon as I end this clip. Um, and this will be my physical read. It's nice and short. It's Okay, this is a glossary, other stuff. There is a book too, nice. It is only 235 pages, which is not bad. So I'm hoping I can bust this out, but also look at this cover. Gorgeous. All right, so I'll just check in later. Reading update time. I really should be reading, but I need to update the vlog, right? Um, so it is Tuesday, August 22nd. It's like 12 o'clock. I've got a couple hours before I go to work. Although I might leave early today. I don't know. Do some like retail therapy. But anyway, because I need content for the vlog. B-roll, if you will. So anyway, um, reading update. For the TBR game Lauren's version. I started reading Daughter of Winter um, yesterday. I got to page 48, chapter 6. <clears throat> so, so far we have been introduced to all the characters. So, what we have is a dual timeline and we have in the past it's 3rd century BC Scotland and we have it's a name, it's a fantasy name, Taller Tallervin, maybe? And this person is the, um, what does she do? She's the beginning of this ancient prophecy. And so the modern timeline, we have Birdie and she lives in New Zealand and she is working at like a jewelry store and we meet our male lead gage when he comes into the jewelry store and he says your grandmother has died and she left you the estate and birdie is like not interested the relationship between birdie and her grandmother is not good not existent like apparently her it's either her mom or her dad one of the sides of the family is not is like a different 
background than the one of this grandmother, like not the Scottish background. And so there's like kind of tension there. And um, <coughs> so the grandmother was like not interested in a relationship, but she left all of this. Um, what is it? She left the estate to Birdie and Gage says she has to come now and Birdie's like no and so he leaves but he doesn't really leave New Zealand because obviously he needs to take this woman back to the estate because he has some sort of um, reason, personal reason for her to take over the estate and it has to do with the prophecy. So that's where we are so far. Um, we just saw Birdie go to like a nightclub with her friend and she was being hit on by these guys and Gage was like watching and he was like, no, no, I don't like this. So that's where I am with this. I also got to chapter five in um, Dragonfly and Amber, which is not far. I, I, I realize that. <laughs> But it is a reread and I'm listening on audio and during the week I really only have time to listen to audio like on my commute, which is like not much time. It's like maybe an hour bo worth both ways, not even like 45 minutes. Um, so, so far we are in Scotland and in not modern day, but it's the 60s, right? And Claire and Brianna came to um, Mr. Wakefield's estate because he passed away and Claire wants like answers. So she goes to Roger and Roger is this assistant professor. Of course, he's the little boy that we meet in the first book. And um, he does some research for Claire on these men that died at Culloden or, you know, what their fates were. And of course, he doesn't realize that he's researching like her friends. He just thinks he's researching like, you know, ancestors or whatever. And Claire doesn't, or not Claire, Brianna doesn't know anything yet about her um, father. I don't get the impression that she realizes that Frank isn't her father. Although like, why would she not? Cause they look nothing alike. But anyway, that's a thing. And I'm getting ready to start chapter five, which is Beloved Wife. And Claire keeps saying like, no, we'll go to the Standing Stones together. Like I wanna show Brianna these Standing Stones. So I think she goes and like retells the whole story. And then we jump to part two. Ah, where is it? Chapter five. Whoa. Chapter five. Okay. Yeah. So after chapter five, we jump to part two and we go back to the past and that's when we go to France. Um, so yeah, that's exciting. I'm excited to go back into the past and get to see Jamie. I know some really tough stuff happens in this second book. I mean, tough stuff happens in the whole series, but if you know, you know, there's going to be some sad things. So that's where I am with that. And then if you are keeping up with the amazing readathon at all, it, we are in our prompt number eight, I believe. And the prompt is to read a book that has some sort of like script or calligraphy on it. And of course, I don't have any book with script or calligra calligraphy started. Um, this is just plain, like the N is fancy, but that's it. And then I did find an edition of Dragonfly and Amber that has like calligraphy on it and I ordered it from Better World Books but I don't know if it'll be here in time for this prompt so that might be not a thing that happens. And I'm thinking about skipping this leg so I can keep reading historical things because I do have plenty of um, money, fake money left. But I don't know. I'm thinking about reading Secrets in the Dark by Darcy Coates. It has calligraphy on the bottom for the poisoned pen um, press. And this is the second book in the Black Winter series. 
which snow not snow on the tracks that's that's a manga voices in the snow is on rise um host favorites so if i read this i would get 50 grc it's very long okay it is 484 pages which is a little little much considering i'm reading these two chunky well this isn't long but this is long um so i'm thinking of starting this and trying to read it i mean darcy Coates' books read really fast so maybe it won't be too bad <laughs> but um hey it works for cold as you it, it works for this like reading tbr game because it's cold so anyway this is the second book in the series and it's been so long since i read the first one but let's see what does the back say winterborn hall is not safe even as claire and doran scrambled to secure the ancient building against ravenous hollow ones they face far, something far worse. Claire's sister has made contact, but she's trapped, and her oxygen is running out. Hundreds of miles separate Claire from Beth. The land between them is infested with monsters, and the roads are a maze of dead ends. Claire has to choose between making a journey that she knows she might not survive or staying safe in Winterborn and listening as her sister slowly suffocates. At least whatever her choice, she'll have Doran at, by her side, and yet... There are eyes in the dark, there are whispers in the mist, there's danger lurking, lurking in the snow, and one false step could end it all. So maybe I'll get this started before work, we'll see. Because you never know when the next prompt will drop, so I gotta read that. Anyway, I'll check in later. Maybe I'll have shopping B-roll. We'll anyway, I wanted to see how easy and fun designing a notebook for Amazon is. And so let's see if the results. I've only done one so far. Um, ooh, it is a fall themed notebook. We've got some leaves. I think the back is definitely better than the front, but that's okay. And then on the inside, got this. It says, just a thought. This was supposed to be the cover, and I think I kind of did that wrong, but that's okay. And then we've got these pages. I think I did 100 pages. They've just got places to take notes and little fall leaves. And then in the back, I've just got that page. So anyway, that's really cute. I think it came out really well. I think the size is perfect and the printing, I mean, it would be nice if this went all the way to the edges. Maybe that's something I need to figure out how to make that bigger or make the book smaller. I'm not sure, but I like this size of book and look, it's floppy. It's got that like smooth indie texture. So I definitely think I'm going to design a couple more notebooks um, in the future because this is just so cute. I was thinking about doing like a planner, maybe like a reading journal, those kinds of things. But yeah, so there's that. <laughs> and then we've got our Waterstones order. I'm hoping this is foxglove, but oh, did not rip right. Okay, let's try this side. Yes. Okay. Oh, it is. Ah! We've got Foxglove by Adeline Grace. So this is the follow-up to Belladonna. This is the Fairy Loot Edition, which I did order the, the Fairy Loot Edition of Foxglove as well. This was one of my favorites of last year. Look at those edges. So pretty. One of my favorites of last year. I'm thinking of rereading it in September for Battleathon because I want to do a do I actually know my taste? Do I still like the same things type of vlog? So anyway, we've got Foxglove. Ooh, check out that case. That is pretty pink. And it is signed on that page. So let's see. Oh my gosh, the dedication. This is cute. 
I have a friend who was asked, what gets you out of bed in the morning during a job interview? She answered my alarm clock. This book is for her, for always being my first reader, the, my best travel partner, an A-plus stalker, and for making me laugh even when she doesn't mean to. That's fun. Ooh, look at that page design. So let's see. What is the description? The captivating sequel to Belladonna, in which Cigna and Deathface, a na supernatural foe, determined to tear them apart. A duke has been murdered. The Lord of Thorngrove has been framed, and Fate, the elusive brother of death, has taken up residence in the sumptuous estate nearby. He's hellbent on revenge after death took the life of the woman he loved many years ago, and now he's determined to have Signa for himself, no matter the cost. Signa and her cousin Bly are certain that Fate can save Elijah Hawthorne from prison if they will entertain his presence. But the more time the girls spend with Fate, the more frightening their reality becomes as Cigna exhibits dramatic new powers that link her to Fate's past. With mysterious dangers around every corner, the cousins must decide if they can trust one another as they navigate their futures in high society, unravel the murders that haunt their family, and play Fate's unexpected games, all with their destinies hanging in the balance. So I am excited to get to this one. I'm high key looking for like script so I can read this for the amazing readathon, even though I want to save for September and that's like, it's so close. I can wait. So anyway, that's a little bookish haul there for you. Notebook, book, cool.